Yeah, hi, hi. My, my name is Pete Tinsel. I'm the what they call the Principal Historic Environment Officer for Bristol City Council. Uh, that basically means I look after the, the old stuff in the city of Bristol. As part of my role, uh, I manage what we call the Historic Environment Record. And while I've been doing that, it was my idea to try and make that much more accessible uh, along with uh, the information about our historic sites. I also wanted to make sure it was a kind of an interactive resource with lots of old maps and things from our archives that we can put onto a web resource that was gonna be free for everyone to use. So everyone, anyone could learn about the history of Bristol. And that started 10 years ago. Uh, basically it was an idea that we would take the archives materials, the maps, old images and things, and put them all on this map online and allow people to compare old and new maps, look at old pictures, like old postcard images and things. Um, but the main thing I wanted to do was, if we're talking about the story of the history, the story of a place, the people who know that story are the people who live in those places. That's who knows those stories the best. So if you want to kind of, so if you want to look after that, that, that history, you need to have the voices of the, those neighborhoods, those communities. So I asked the developers, um, basically my colleagues in, the, in our, um, our, our tech team to, to build this resource that will allow people to upload information and images to the website to create what we call the community layer. And for me, it's been the most, one of the most rewarding things. I mean, it's lovely to see the old maps on online and so on but to actually have people tell us what's important about their street or their house or the neighborhood actually put that point on the map so it appears as a green diamond on the map is just fantastic to actually have that, that 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 information coming straight from those people straight onto the map it is just fantastic and so that was the idea when we started out was to make sure that we presented our information about the history of a place but we also allowed members of the public to tell us how they understood the history of the place as well. So it becomes this shared understanding about the history of, of Bristol. And I mean, that's gone from strength to strength. Once we launched it in March, 2011, um, it got a lot of interest within the city itself, but it also uh, generated interest amongst our neighbors as well. And out of that came the Heritage Lottery funded project to expand know your place beyond Bristol to cover uh, a lot of the west of England so now there are know your places there are eight different versions of know your place each one managed uh, in each individual locality within each local authority so there's one in Gloucestershire there's one in Wiltshire there's one in South Gloucestershire there's one in Baines there's one in Somerset there's one in Devon and there's one in North Somerset and it's been really fantastic to see how each one of those local areas have, have taken ownership of Know Your Place and created it in, in, in the way they want it to be. So they've actually created their own version of Know Your Place and, and that's just that's exactly how it should be. My idea from uh, about, uh, to, to enable this to happen, it, so, so I'd seen other, t other sites, websites where people were doing the enabling this comparison of old map and new map and it's the sort of thing I was doing in my day job and so I was doing that well on my own laptop or pc um looking at old maps to understand how places have changed over time so that, to, that was part of my day job but I'd seen online other places where they were showing old maps and allowing people to do that comparison of old and new and I said to our tech guys would we be able to do that in Bristol could we have our own version of it like this, but go beyond what those other sites were doing and do what we call crowdsourcing, actually collecting that information from members of the public as well. And they said they could do that. We secured a little bit of money and it was only a little bit of money to do that initial uh, build. And so, yeah, that, that was the brief I wrote to the tech guys and that's what they built for us. Now there's no, at that stage, the idea was really to, to to help me do my job in a way my job is to look after the like i say the old buildings the old archaeology of the city and so on so to an order for, in order for me to do my job better it was i needed access to all of that information 
so really in a, way, in a way you could say it was a very selfish kind of <laughs> kind of a, approach because i was just trying to get make my life easier by getting people to tell me what was important in the local areas so i could manage it better but um yeah, i mean it's just gone beyond my expectations in that having so many people and we have volunteers helping us build and enrich those stories it was just not not something i could have ever possibly imagined and in fact it's not just me then who has benefited from this it has benefited colleagues of mine within i work in the planning departments other people in the planning department use it on a daily basis People in the archives team will look at it and they'll say that they make use of it all the time. People coming in when we could come in to the archives, doing research, they want to see an old map and they will just show them know your place. So it benefits the archives. And then it's also the benefits to the wider community has just, it's just gone beyond what I could have ever possibly hoped in that people are actually learning so much about their right down to their, their their individual houses or certainly their streets or their neighborhoods it's just it's and particularly what during lockdown people have done loads and loads of personal research while they've had the time to look at the maps look at the information that's available in any place and begin to get more and more understanding about how heritage is everywhere it's not just stuff that's in the museum it's not just stuff that's in the archives it's not just stuff that's in the uh, on an archaeological site somewhere it's in everybody's it street <laughs> everywhere in in the house i'm living in in the street my house is on in the neighborhood that's been built that's part uh, this house is part of it is everywhere and there is and what's the best thing about it is those stories about those places when people say oh i used to go to the baker's that was at the end of the street and this i used to buy the hot cross buns from there or i used to go to this sweet shop when i was a child and my my mum would give me some you know half, you know, half hate me to go and buy some sweets or, or whatever it might be and now those things have gone and yet it's part of the fabric and the kind of evolution of these places that we kind of need to kind of hang on to in some way. Somerset Council's senior archaeologist um, I use Know Your Place every day in my job um, in terms of sort of planning applications and, and different projects that I work on and for me, I find it an amazing resource because not only do you have the historic maps that you can sort of take a look at and travel back through time, but you've also got the historic environment record data and information on things like listed buildings and scheduled monuments and historic parks and gardens. And in addition to that, you've got all the information that the sort of general public can, um, can add to the map. Um, which just gives us that kind of that extra level of, of information and sort of understanding of, of the heritage of North Somerset, which is really important when it comes to things like placemaking and, and new developments. Um, and as I said, I use it every single day. Um, You've only got to look at social media to see your regular daily posts anyway, um, which I'm sure has caused a lot of interaction from a lot of people that wouldn't necessarily have known about it. So, you know, how do you feel about this, this kind of interaction? Well, in one word, amazing. Um, so we set up the social media accounts at the start of the first lockdown in March 2020, because obviously not being able to get out into the community, we needed some way to be able to engage. Um, and it seemed like a good idea to set up a, a Facebook group and um, a Twitter account so that we could get the information um, that the volunteers have put on to know your place and, and sort of the general public as well to share with the general population of North Somerset and those much further afield. Um, so in just over a year, we've actually accumulated over a thousand members uh, in our Facebook group and over 600 followers on Twitter, which is incredible. And we've engaged with people all around the world. Um, as you said, we sort of we do a, a regular post, whether that's every day or every other day on a sort of specific theme, um, whether that's tying into things like Heritage Open Days or the Festival of Archaeology or Local History Month. Um, 
or we do things like you know guess the building from this historic image and it's been incredible because so many people have engaged with those posts and been able to provide us with a little bit more information on the history of a building or who lived there or what shop might have been at that location and at a particular time and that's what's really important it's about having those conversations with people and and learning you know those kind of different aspects of social history and not just about the kind of bricks and mortar of a building or you know the finds from an archaeological site no so the you you obviously enjoy that interaction then and you know you, you do find it it is interesting to learn as you said the history of places yeah and actually yeah and, and pulling the information together from know your place and, and other sort of sources um actually really helps me in my job as well and this, the same with Kate our conservation officer you know we're constantly learning when we're pulling this information together and when we've shared what we've put together and, and other people are coming back and saying well actually this happened then or this person did this thing then or um you know this building was and you know under this sort of use at, at this particular time yeah. that's just brilliant yeah. because it just gives us so much more and and seeing people kind of engage and having conversations on those posts um about their memories as well is just it's so important yeah see things like yeah that used to be my uncle fred shop or whatever yeah yeah I remember yeah or we used to play in there. that field as kids or yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly yeah <laughs> yeah but no it, it's a bit of a change i suppose from a dusty office isn't it yeah <laughs> <laughs> very much so so you, know, you mentioned like the number of followers were, were you expecting that kind of growth no and i think it was a, a really good time to kind of have that engagement through a digital platform because people were looking for something extra um and looking at engaging with something in their local community you know on a digital platform um and know your place was just the perfect way to do that you know it's it's freely accessible on the internet so anybody can explore the map and then obviously our social media kind of ties into everything so every post that we do has a link to a specific place on the map as well so it gives people the opportunity to click that link go to that place and then explore um and as i say to everybody when i'm talking about know your place it should come with a health warning um because you start looking at one place on the map and you know a handful of hours later you're only five minutes down the road but you could be 200 years back in history and you know learning about you something you, you never knew before mm. yeah. oh. which is incredible um so we've got a, a small but mighty team of volunteers um dedicated enthusiastic and they have such a breadth of knowledge and just yeah a real kind of thirst for wanting to share that knowledge with with everybody else which is incredible um and i'd just like to take this opportunity to thank them you know on behalf of kate and myself and, and other colleagues at the council because without them the project wouldn't be what it is you know we've had over a thousand contributions added to the know your place north somerset map and that has been through the work of the volunteers solely and obviously colleagues at western museum as well have helped facilitate that and it's you know, so far the the project has just it's been amazing, and I, I really look forward to to seeing what we can do in the future.